Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zeta with you and this is the secret place where the atmosphere of heaven is always present and we've been getting into the study of Psalms 139 and we are going to continue to talk about what God has done for you. He's gone to your future, he's written this wonderful book about you and he has come back and revealed that to you by his spirit. So God is unfolding, he's unlocking. We talked about the power of your words and how they can be formed inside your spirit and you can speak out your future and you don't speak out your circumstances you say where you're going and so God has created you with a tongue that is supposed to speak where you're going not where you are at the present time and remember that Jesus taught this he taught us that we're supposed to speak to our mountains we talked about this on a previous program but this show we're going to talk about the Lord guides you the Lord's hand is on you and he wants to guide you. So it says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time and it hastens to the end of fulfillment. It will not deceive or disappoint. Though it tarry, wait earnestly for it because it will surely come and it will not be behind, but it is going to come at the appointed day. And so God has already ordained these things for you in a book but they are not going to tarry. And see, a lot of us, we get really impatient when we pray and we don't have a result. But you have to understand, every time you pray, God knows that you just prayed. Not only that, He knows what you're going to pray before you pray it. So God has already been to your future. So no matter what you think, feel right now, it, it doesn't compare to the glory that is waiting for you in heaven. And while you're on this earth, did you know that you can fulfill God's will down here and actually have joy? That you can encounter happiness and joy in this life. And God says, I'm going to fulfill everything in its time. So Habakkuk is talking about a vision that had yet not been fulfilled. But at the appointed time, it's going to come. And it says, even though it seems delayed, it's going to come to fulfillment. And that's a word for you today. You need to trust in God that he has spoken over your life. You know, in, in um, Zephaniah chapter 3, it talks about, in verse 17, it talks about God singing over you. He sings songs of deliverance over you and around you. He is a warrior. It says the Lord is a warrior. Well, that's pretty strong language. And he sings over you songs of deliverance. So, He's singing over you, but he is talking about your deliverance. And so you need to talk about your deliverance. And you can also, if you really, really are sensitive to the spirit right now, you can sense a spirit talking to you. That's the hand of the Lord. And the Lord is taking hold of you right now. And he wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. And that's what we were talking about in this session. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. And that's a sure statement. God is always wanting to guide his children. So remember what we talked about, the spirit of adoption in chapter 8, verse 15 of Romans, that God has put the spirit of adoption in us that cries out, Father, Father. So as a father would take his child's hand when there's need to take the child to where they need to go, that is what God's going to do. He's, he's taking your hand right now and he wants to lead you in to your destiny. You, you are very valuable to God. He has invested everything in you. He sent his son back, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, to die for you and to be, to be resurrected in the day when he comes back and he claims his own. So you're going to be part of that resurrection, whether you live your full life out here or if you get caught up in the catching away of the Spirit of God at the end of, the, of this age or whether you go by the grave and then God resurrects you, you are going to experience resurrection. God is going to come and take hold of you. But until that time comes, while we're on this, this earth, we can encounter the resurrection power. I mean, everybody wants to be visited by God, but don't you understand that the Spirit of God is manifesting His power inside of you. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead is inside of you right now. And just think about it. Right now, you don't know God's will, but the Spirit of God does. He wants to communicate that with you. And so the Lord is promised 
in this verse 10 of Psalms 139, he's promised he's going to take our hand and he is going to guide us. In, um, in the last session, we talked about uh, Psalm 16. And I just want to reiterate this uh, in this program because it's verse 11 in the Passion Translation says, For you bring me a continual revelation of resurrection life. The path to the bliss that brings me face to face with you. Is that not amazing? You ought to just take that verse in the Passion Translation. That's in Psalm 16, verse 11. You need to just take that and eat that every day. Meditate on that. The psalmist says, you're bringing me into continual revelation for, of the resurrection life. So you can have a, re a res resurrection life revelation every day. The path of, the, of bliss that brings me face to face with you. That's the secret place. That's what I'm talking about. The atmosphere of heaven where nothing is impossible, where you can't doubt, where you can't fear. There is no such thing as unbelief in the secret place. There is no such thing as fear in the secret place. In Psalms 23, 4, David said this, Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of the deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me for you already have. Isn't that amazing? So if God has already overcome you with his love and his power, and in a sense, he's conquered you, then, then fear could never disturb you. Fear can't conquer you because you've been overcome and conquered by God's love. So God's love guides you. God's love is what takes that hand of that child and guides that child where he should go when the child doesn't have the ability to do it. That's what the Father God wants to do. If I continue with this in, um, in Psalms 23, it goes on to say this, you remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority in my strength and in my peace, your comfort of your love takes away all fear, takes away my fear. So this psalm right here is telling you that the relationship that David had with Father God was one that his authority was his strength. So God's authority in his life was his strength and his peace and God's comfort in his life and the love that God displayed to him took fear away. So David wasn't afraid. Now, you know that. And you're like wondering, like, how did he just run to that giant and take that giant out with a slingshot. This is, this is his secret right here. He knew his authority, and he knew that he was under God's authority, and so he came at that giant in God's strength with God's peace on him, but also he had been comforted, it says, and this love that was revealed to him drove away fear. Think about this. David had no fear, and he was just a boy, and... I always tell people this, and I'm telling you this. You are in the New Testament, in the New Covenant. It's based on better promises. And the covenant that Jesus Christ gave you with the Father is better than the Old Testament. But think about it. The Old Testament was powerful because a shepherd boy could have the revelation that he was under authority, and so that gave him strength and peace, and that the comfort and love of God drove away fear. And this is under the Old Covenant. So, so now we know that the Spirit of God in the New Testament has brought us into a new covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ. And in that covenant, the perfect love of God drives out fear. So fear has to do with torment, which is of the devil. So the devil should be the one tormented, not you. And so David had no fear. And so he became a giant slayer. And that's what God wants us to become. That's what he's made us. He's never, ever planned on us failing. Did you know that? Did you know that in your book in heaven, I know, I know I've seen these books. There's not one entrance in that book. There's not one entry where it talks about failure. 
It talks about your overcoming plans that God has written about you. Your overcoming plans. There's plans that are written about you, but they're overcoming plans. That's what you're a part of. Now, I'm telling you the truth. I know it's hard to believe, but when I was there, I knew that my spirit knew no defeat. I knew my spirit, my spirit, my heart. It was a new creature in Christ. It had never experienced defeat. It cannot accept defeat. So that's why you're disappointed all the time because you know inside that something's wrong and something that was supposed to happen didn't happen. But see, God put that in you because God puts hope in you. He puts faith in you that your spirit doesn't know how to handle defeat because it's foreign. Do you understand what I'm saying? God's kingdom, his plan for your life doesn't involve any failure. So you're not going to see in your book anything wrong, anything bad. He is speaking your future as though it's now. So when you read your book, it's prophetic in some instances now, you say, well, I've had so much failure. I've had so many things happen to me that are wrong. Well, how do you explain that? Well, here, here's, here's the thing. God uh, can only do what you agree to. There's, there's things that Jesus couldn't do in his own hometown in Galilee. It says that he went there and he was doing all these miracles in all the other places. So Jesus told me this. He said, it's the same with anybody. He said, if you don't believe, if you don't discern, Things will not happen if you you have to engage the spirit realm. You have to engage the realm of heaven. You have to engage the atmosphere that God creates around you that is that is completely doubt free. So Jesus could not perform miracles in his own hometown. And he said it was because of their unbelief. So they discerned him as the carpenter's son, but they did not discern him as the, the son of God, the Messiah. And so what they got was they got a carpenter's son. And so I always kid with people, you know, if you discern Jesus as a carpenter's son, all you get is a table and chairs. But if you discern him as Messiah, you get whatever you're asking from him. So if you remember in the scriptures constantly, people were screaming out to Jesus and they're saying, son of David, have mercy on me, heal me. And they got healed. Well, if you said son of David, you were calling him the Messiah. And so Jesus right away, he was drawn to that. But in his own hometown, they said, oh, that's just Joseph's son, you know, the carpenter. And so Jesus himself, now listen to me, Jesus was limited. The son of God was limited from doing miracles. Why? Because of unbelief. So you got to see this, that the reason why you're in what you're in is because you aren't discerning. It's impossible for Jesus to not engage you and do what you ask if you discern him as your deliverer, as your Messiah, as your healer, as the revealer of truth. Are you following me? You have to discern Jesus because he said to me, he said, I was limited because people didn't discern me. How many times, you can find them in the Bible, I have. There's, there's times where people were talking to Jesus and they were saying, you know, this is what's wrong with me and this is what I need. And, and Jesus said, if you discerned, if you knew who was standing before you, if you knew who was speaking to you, you would ask of him and he would give you. And there's these examples where Jesus was waiting for the people to have faith in who he was. So I'm asking you this. You say, well, I have all these discrepancies. All these things are happening to me. How do you explain this when my book only has good things about it? Why is there all these bad things happening to me? I'm telling you how, it's, how it happens. Jesus said that you have to make the most high your dwelling place. That, that means it's a permanent residence. He said, if you dwell in the shadow of the Most High, none of these things are going to happen to you. Angels are going to come and protect you. There's not going to be any disease. It goes on the whole way through. If you read from verse 10 down to 16 of Psalms 91, it's all these benefits if you make the Most High your dwelling place. But if you don't, then the evil one can touch you. So, I'm telling you this so that you can make the adjustment in your life because your books that are written about you are all the good things that God has planned for you. He's never planned for you to fail. 
but the discrepancy on this earth is we're in a fallen world and you need to take the truth that's in God's word by faith, which means you have to discern Jesus as your deliverer. You have to discern Jesus as your healer. You have to discern him as the, the one who is speaking truth, the resurrection and the life, the one who breathed on the disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. You have to discern him as that. And if you do, it's impossible for you not to receive. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Jesus said, if you love me and you will do what I have commanded, me and my father will come and live with you. Well, what happens if God, the father and God, the son come and live with you? Well, things are going to change really quickly. But don't you think there's going to be some corrections happen, it, even in your body in, and in your, in your life with your finances, uh, with your understanding, with uh, the way you live? It's all going to change. Well, absolutely, the word of God is true. So when Jesus spoke that in John, he also said it again in John 15. He said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, my words abide in you, he said, you can ask what you will and it shall be done for you. Well, why is that? It's because Jesus is in command. Jesus is the Lord of your life. But see, you have to discern him as Lord. You have to discern him as the authority in your life. And so God wants to guide you and take your hand. But what you get out of this life has to do with the revelation of who Jesus is. So if you need Jesus to make you a table and chairs, then you discern him as a carpenter, so to speak. And it sounds funny, but think about it. Jesus couldn't perform miracles in his own hometown. And then you know this, Paul said, I long to come to you, but he said, I was hindered by Satan, but perhaps I will come to you soon. Now, here's the apostle Paul, who was caught up into heaven, who saw all these amazing things in the third heaven. And he's telling the Corinthians, he said, I actually plan to come to you, but I was stopped by Satan. The apostle Paul was stopped by Satan. Well, remember, Jesus was stopped by unbelief. What happened when Peter saw Jesus walking on the water? Jesus, when Peter asked him, he said, you can come. So Peter was doing fine. And then he fell into the water and Jesus grabbed him. But what did Jesus say? He said, why did you doubt? So the Lord is saying right now, he is grabbing your hand. He's saying, I'm going to guide you. I'm bringing you in to your promised land, so to speak. I have written a book about you. You have a good and expected end, a plans to prosper according to Jeremiah 29, 11. And the books are before God and before the angels right now. You see, the angels, they have their assignments. And I'm just being honest with you. Uh, I mean, I just, I, I wouldn't do anything else, right? But I'm telling you, I have to be honest with you here. The angels have no problem with, with, with what's written about you. I mean, just right now in your mind, they, they, are, they literally go and grab your books, they open them, and they look at what God has planned for you. And then their command is to go down and do the Lord's bidding, which is what's written in that book. So God's plans and purposes for you, they become the angels' plans and purposes for you. So when they come down, they're just representing God. That's why they do his bidding. That's why they only exalt the Lord God. They only give credit to him. They don't want to be worshiped. They're just helping you, serving you. They've been sent to serve those who are going to inherit salvation. They're sent to minister to you and minister for you. They're to attend to you. What happened? Many of you have been tempted to where you just want to give up. But see, think about Jesus. He was tempted for 40 days. And after he passed all his tests, just like you're going to do, you're going to pass your test. But just think about what happened afterwards. It says that the angels of the Lord came and ministered to Jesus. 
So if Jesus needed ministry of angels after he was tempted of the devil, then I know that you and I have need of that. So don't you think that if Jesus was ministered to by angels after temptation, that every time you get tempted, every time you are tried, every time you go through a hard place, that the angels are being sent. Don't you, I mean, you've got to know, you've got to trust God. The angels have been briefed already on what your book says. So they have no problem with it. They come down, they want to minister to you, but you have to start to have a conscious, uh, a consciousness about angels and about their ministry to the saints because they're for you. So when God guides you, he never plans for you to fail. And I think the spirit of God has been clear on this program that he doesn't intend for you to ever fail. And the disappointments, the things, the discrepancies that happen in our life, it's because we're in a fallen world. We're in this world system where the God of this world is Satan. His demons want to enforce curses and angels want to enforce God's blessing. And so they are carriers of the blessing. So you have God's hand on you and you have God's hand in your hand and he's guiding you. He's taking you into the future. Now, I want to address a couple things. There's a couple of you, you have felt so weak that you can't go on. And the Lord is speaking to you. He said, he said I'm strengthening you. Listen to what's being said right now. The, the Lord is speaking to you and he's telling you, listen, I haven't given up on you. And you haven't gone so far that I've rejected you. I've come after you. The Lord's saying, you were supposed to watch this program to be encouraged because the Spirit of the Lord is so willing right now to take your hand and guide you out of the problem you're in. There's situations where your life is in danger and the angels of the Lord have been sent to, to walk you out of this. God is going to deliver you. There's going to be a great deliverance. You're going to have a great testimony. Just trust in God. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. And this is what I do. I always thank my angels for being the faithful ones who carry out God's will. There's nothing impossible with them. They don't consider failure as an option. Think about this. I have never met an angel that was sent down here thinking that they were going to fail. I have never met an angel. You, if you knew how many angels I have encountered that, 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 that could care less about what we ask or think, they care about what God has said about us. So it's always greater. So like if you think you're going to ask an angel for something, it's going to be much lower than what God has already told them to do for you. So you need to trust in God. I see these angels wanting to help you right now. And see, you need, you need to grasp a hold of this. God has sent his angels to deliver you. God has sent his word to heal you. You need to discern Jesus right now as you're delivered. There is nothing impossible right now. By the Spirit of God, I'm telling you, you are set free. There's nothing impossible for you. And I, I see many of you right now, you're crying because you're so broken. The Lord says, just hang in there a little longer because I have sent my angels concerning you. They're going to lift you up and deliverance is on the way. Thanks for joining me on this program and we'll see you next time.